a flight out until the day after Christmas, Mom. Everything is canceled. Oh, well, that's OK, sweetie. Look, everything happens for a reason. We'll just postpone Christmas till you get here. Postpone Christmas? No way. I'm going to drive. What? Ivy, no, that's like 20 hours alone in the car. You... It's 20 hours from Charleston to Boston. 16, and that's with stopping. I can the storm, Mom. I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. Ivy. Ivy Louise Anderson. Everything okay? She hung up on me. is making its way through the Midwest to the Northeast, dumping over six feet of snow in parts of the country. Bundle up and be glad you aren't dealing with such a bad blizzard. Airports in the Northeast have been closed and hundreds of flights have been canceled. Stay warm, Charleston. And here's a Bring on the Snow by Rory Kelly. Bring on the snow. It's really bad here, Ivy. It started an hour ago. You're never gonna make it. Never say never. I'll be home by midnight. Promise me you'll stop if it gets too bad, you know? Or if you get too tired. Sawyer, you sound like mom. Relax, I'll be fine. All right? I'll see you soon. Uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Do you know how far it is to Richmond? Uh, no, I'm not from around here. I don't, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Me. You okay? Yes, but my car is stuck and oh, I have a flat. You've got two flats. What happened? 
Lit. It's stupid. Probably, seeing as you're driving in the biggest snowstorm of the decade. Uh, what happened? I skidded. I don't see any skid marks. Fine. But I was searching for my phone, and I took my eyes off the road. I swerved to avoid a car, and I... I'm here. Happy? How long you been here? I don't know. What time is it? Almost 8.30. 8.30? No. No, no, that can't be right. Well, it is. Is there somewhere you're supposed to be? Yes. Home. For Christmas. Where's home? Maybe I could give you a ride. Outside of Boston? Boston? You're far away from home, princess. Don't call me princess. I didn't mean anything by it. My name is Ivy. And? Can you get me to Boston? No. Why not? Boston's a six-hour drive in good weather, and we're in the middle of a snowstorm. It stopped snowing. Yeah, for now, it's gonna start back up again soon. Well, can you tow me somewhere? Yeah, I could tow you to my dad's shop, but you're gonna have to wait a while. Why? Well, because I already have two cars, and I have three calls that I have to get to before you. Well, why did you stop? To make sure you were alive. <sighs> How kind of you. Listen, princess, I could leave you here, or I could drop you off at the inn. It's your call. I'll get my stuff. Good job. Do you have a phone I can use? Oh, no, mine ran out of juice like an hour ago. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's go. You got it, princess. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you for the ride. No problem, princess. And the snow should be done by then, so everyone can walk to my house, if nothing else. I'll be there with bells on, Mrs. Mayor. Well, quite literally, since you're playing Santa. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> uh, may I help you? Yes, I'd like a room for the night, please. Oh, I'm sorry, but there are no more rooms available. None at all? No, I'm sorry. Well, are there any hotels in town? No, there aren't. Well, how about nearby? I could take a cab somewhere. I'm sorry, but all the hotels in the area are all sold out. <sighs> Fantastic. I'm sorry, I don't mean to butt in, but is something wrong? My car is stuck and I can't get home. Oh, where's home? Outside of Boston. Oh, you're a long way from home. Yes, I know. But you don't have any friends in the area? I drove up from Charleston to be with my family for Christmas. Oh, you poor thing, you must be exhausted. We don't have any vacancies at all, Mrs. Mayor. They're booked from here to Oneonta. You can stay at my house. Excuse me? Uh, we have plenty of room. Uh, you'll have your own bedroom and private bathroom. It's, it's no trouble at all. Mrs. Mayor, are you sure? We don't have any openings until Christmas morning. Quite. And uh, I'm not leaving this lady out in the cold during the holidays. I couldn't possibly impose on you like that. Oh, please, it's no imposition. Besides, if I can't show hospitality, then who can? I'm the mayor of Bethlehem. Bethlehem? Yes. 
You're in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. <laughs> What's so funny? I'm in Bethlehem and there's no room at the inn for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'll take you home. Thank you. I'm Ivy. Uh, nice to meet you, Ivy. I'm Judy. Mayor Judy Carson. That is. <laughs> Thank you, George. You're welcome. Uh, spread the word in town that the Christmas party is at my house instead of being canceled. Will do. You're having a Christmas party for the entire town? It's not a very big town. See you tomorrow. Okay, see you then. Charles, I'm home. Hi, honey. We have company tonight. <laughs> and um, maybe for the next few days. Oh? <laughs> Ivy, this is my husband, Charles. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Charles. Thank you for your hospitality. You're welcome. Uh, Ivy's car is stuck by the side of the road outside of town. Are you all right? Yes, I am. Thank you. Just tired. Uh, they had no room at the inn, so I told her that she could stay with us until the storm passes. Oh, of course. Do you happen to have a phone I could use? My family must be worried sick. I haven't spoken to them in hours. It's in the kitchen, on the counter. I will give you some privacy. Use it whenever you want while you're here. Thank you. What? <laughs> Hello? Mom! Mom, it's Ivy! Ivy, you've been worried sick. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I lost my phone when I went to get something to eat, but I'm fine. Everything is fine. Ivy, where are you? Yeah, I'm in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I'm staying at the mayor's house because there was no room at the inn. <laughs> really? <laughs> she's... She's in Bethlehem. And she's staying with the mayor because there was no room at the end. It's not funny, Mayor. I, Mom, come on. I, no. So, Ivy, listen, the roads here are really, really bad. We, we don't want you going out and trying to drive here tonight. Can you just spend the night there and then let's just regroup tomorrow and see how the weather and the roads are, okay? I told you she wasn't going to make it. Yeah, I need to take a look at the car, too. I mean, I'm fine. Don't worry. Everything is okay. But, well, there might be a little issue with the car. Did you get in an accident? It's no big deal. I just have two flats, but I gotta get it fixed before I start driving again. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I love you, Ivy. I love, I love you, Ivy. Ivy, I love, I love you, baby. Careful. I love you. Be careful, please. Did you get a hold of your parents? <sighs> sure did. Thank you. Charles took your suitcase up to your room. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, we own the shop in town, so Charles will take a look at your car once the storm lets up. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, the tow truck driver said he was going to go back and get my car. You met Max. Well, if that's the tow truck driver's name, then yes. He dropped me off at the inn. Really? Yeah, he said he was going to get my car, but I don't remember what shop he said he was going to bring it to. Um, ours. Charles runs the only shop in town. He'll take a look at your car tomorrow. Thank you, Judy, truly. Stop thanking me. It's the time of year for giving, isn't it? Yes, I suppose it is. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you to your room. This is it. Home sweet home. I'm, for the time being, anyway. You have a really beautiful home. Thank you. Uh, here you go. Oh, thanks. Oh, this bathroom is all yours. Great. Uh, you'll find new soap, shampoo, and anything else you may need under the sink. Wonderful. <laughs> Are you hungry? No, I'm just really tired. Okay. We won't disturb you anymore, Ivy. Get some rest. Yeah, if you need anything else, just talk. Thanks, I will. Well, good night. Good night. You know, I always say that everything happens for a reason. So does my mom. Smart woman. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to finding out the reason for all of this. Good night, Ivy. Mom? Dad? Mom? Shh. Our guest is... Guest? You can't be serious, Mom. You're letting 
a stranger sleep in your house. I bet he robbed you blind. Where is he? Yeah, him. Is he in here? Him. You! I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Close the door. Okay. Would you like some coffee? Please. Hmm. Have a seat. Would you like some breakfast? Sure. Breakfast sounds great. What would you like? I'm happy with anything, Judy. Really, I'm not picky. Okay. I'll fix you a plate. Hi. Hi. Uh, Max, aren't you going to say anything else? Has pajamas. Max! What? I'm suddenly not hungry anymore. Oh, come on, Princess. I was just teasing you. I told you not to call me that. Wait. You two knew each other? We met last night. I picked her up on the side of the road and dropped her off at the inn. Not like that! Max, don't be rude. I had car trouble and Max helped me. I know, dear. You told us that. You were sleeping in your car. So? I lost my phone. You were in a ditch. I skidded and I couldn't stop. Oh, no kidding. What is that supposed to mean? You took your eyes off the road to look for your phone in the middle of a snowstorm. You were asking to get in an accident. Max! How dare you? Why were you even driving in a snowstorm? I don't have to explain myself to you. Max, what has come over you? That's enough! Max, you're tired. But... But you were working all night. Sleep. Ow. Yes, sir. It was an accident. I just wanted to get home. I know. It's okay. He's been towing cars all night. It was a bad night. He hasn't slept. I understand. Please, sit. Eat. Wow. This looks delicious. Oh, trust me, it is. It smells great, too. <laughs> Judy's the best cook in town. She'd have her own restaurant if she didn't become mayor. Really? Well, I don't know about my own restaurant. <laughs> yeah, Judy had the plans all drawn up, and then she decided to run for office. Well, that's part of the story. Uh, Charles took over his dad's shop, and it was just too difficult to run two businesses at once. I guess that's part of it. I always wanted my own restaurant. Really? Yes, I, I went to culinary school in Charleston, and the restaurant where I was a sous chef just closed, so I've been looking for a new job. Well, isn't that interesting? Well, we'll have to share recipes. That would be fun. I mean, it looks like I'm still snowed in. Oh, speaking of which, I better walk on over to the shop. <laughs> Stay warm. <laughs> We'll see you ladies later. Bye. <laughs> You know your mother. When's it gonna be just us, Dad? We have responsibilities. Not to strangers. Max, it's Christmas. It's a time to open your heart. Apparently you're home. <laughs> That's enough. Sorry. Look, Ivy isn't going anywhere. I know. I know. So make the best of it. Make the best of having some spoiled princess living in my home? Our home? Whatever, Dad. She shouldn't be here. But she is. No, and maybe she's supposed to be. You sound like Mom now. <laughs> 30 years of marriage will do that to you. Can you please look at her car right when you get into the shop, please? I will. Because I really want her out of here. Oh, I know. This Christmas was supposed to be just us, Dad. This snowstorm all but guaranteed that no one would be dropping by this year. 
been a really tough year. You don't have to tell me. I know. It, it could have been much worse. I know that too. I'll, I'll do what I can about the car, but I'm not gonna send her out driving in a blizzard. That's fair enough. When's it supposed to stop anyways? Christmas morning. Oh, come on. Go to sleep, Max. I'll see you later. No, they're really nice. Oh, except for Max. Uh, who's Max? Max is the tow truck driver who picked me up last night. So? What does he have to do with the mayor and her husband? Max is their son. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, I wish. He keeps calling me princess. Yeah, well, he's not far off the mark. <laughs> Ivy, seriously, just ignore him, okay? Well, you know, it's kind of hard when there are only four people in the house. Besides, he's really annoying. You just met the guy. How annoying can you be? Well, he keeps nagging me and telling me that I shouldn't have tried to drive home and beat the storm. He's right, though. You shouldn't have. Sawyer, you're my twin brother. You're supposed to be on my side. All right, all right. Look, you'll be out of there soon, and you'll never have to see him again. <sighs> Not soon enough. Look, Ives probably sees a lot of accidents. It sounds like he was worried about you. Worried about me? He just met me. Yeah, whatever. Oh, uh, I gotta go. Sawyer, OK? I'll, I'll talk to you later. Come in. Ivy, I'm so sorry to bother you. No, you're not bothering me. I was just talking to my brother on the phone. What's up? <sighs> the catering company had a pipe burst, and they can't cook for tonight's party. Oh, that's terrible. Is there anything I could do to help? <sighs> I was hoping you would ask. Would you mind cooking with me? No, not at all. This will be fun. Great. What do you have in mind? <sighs> I don't know. We'll have to figure it all out. What time does the party start? It starts at 4.30, and it runs until everyone goes home. OK, uh, well, why don't we do a variety of hot and cold appetizers, a few main dish trays, and a dessert buffet? Cookies and mini pastries. Exactly. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Uh, do you have paper? Uh, of course, but let's plan downstairs so I can see what I actually have. OK, are there any grocery stores open nearby? No, but we can get the ingredients that we're missing from our neighbors. But we don't have a lot of time, though. Oh, relax. This is going to be fun. Let's go plan. <laughs> OK. You know, I have a great recipe for spinach artichoke dip inside a puff pastry. That sounds delicious. Yeah, I can even make it look like a Christmas ornament. That's great. Oh, and we have to make gingerbread men. Uh, and women. Oh, and children. And dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Judy, I know you said to stop thanking you, but I need to say it again. Thank you so much for opening your home to me. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. It's nothing, really. No, it is. It really is. I mean, I've never had a Christmas away from my parents before. I'm 28 years old, and this is my first Christmas without them. I always thought that the first time I'd be spending Christmas away from my parents would be the man I was going to marry, and that we would just drive to my parents' house for dinner or I would drive to our house. But I never pictured Christmas without them. You really miss your family. I do. Yeah, my brother Sawyer and I were best friends. We've been through everything together until I moved to Charleston for culinary school. How long have you lived there? Including school, three years. But now that the restaurant is closing, I don't have anything else. I just want to be with my family to recharge, you know? I do. I'm thinking about just, you know, giving up Charleston and moving back home. You aren't happy there? Not really. I mean, all my friends got jobs in big cities and moved away. No boyfriend? Judy, I don't even have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's lonely there. Well, maybe you got stuck here for a reason. What do you mean? To show you that you belong somewhere else. That there are people out there that you don't know that are willing to open their arms to you. Maybe you're right. She usually is. 
Well, don't let me interrupt. You already did. Pardon me, Princess. I told you not to call me that anymore. Sorry, Holly. It's Ivy. Ivy, Holly, they both deck the halls. I'd like to deck you. All right, you two. Max, we're having the town Christmas party here tonight. I know, Dad told me. All right, well, I need you to find some of the ingredients on this list. Is the store even open? No, but call the neighbors and see if they have anything on the list. Did you call anyone yet? No, but call who you can, and if you don't have their number, just stop by and see if they have any of those ingredients. And if they do, they can have the first serving. Is anybody home? Max, you've seen the snow out there. I mean, everyone's snowbound. They'd be happy to have a visitor. You're the mayor. And your mother. Uh, any word on my car yet? No, my dad's gonna look at it this morning. I dropped it off before I came home. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have an idea what's wrong with it? No, I don't look at the cars. I just pick them up and drop them off. Real tough job you got there, Max. You're really giving it to him. Yeah, well, he deserves it. And I know he's your son. Oh, no, he deserves it. What's his problem, anyway? He had a broken heart. He has a heart. I'm sorry. Oh, he does. But it's behind some pretty thick walls right now. What happened? It's not easy being the son of the mayor, Ivy. Really? But everyone seems to like you. Right? Oh, I know. Charles got cancer, and he didn't want anyone to know. So Max quit his job and came here to help us through it. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. No, oh, it's fine. And he's been in remission for almost a year now. Max was working in Manhattan, and came back to run the family business. And we really didn't want to burden anybody with our family issues, so we kept it to ourselves. It's, it's a lot to handle on yourself, Judy. Oh, I know. And I know that the town would have jumped in to help us through it. But it was Charles's decision to keep it quiet. He knew that he was gonna win the battle, but he wanted to do it privately. I had to respect that. Of course you did. My mom would have done the same. I helped build this town to what it is, but I couldn't focus on Charles, the town, the house. It's a lot. It is. So, Max came back. And he fell in love with a girl who was using him to advance her political career by being connected to me. He was really vulnerable with his dad being sick. That's awful. I know. He gave up everything for us, and she completely took advantage of him. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I didn't mean to hurt his feelings. I know. He's tough. But he's not just a tow truck driver. He's Ivy League educated, and he left one of the best companies in the country to help us out. Wow. I had no idea. I know. Don't worry. You're good for him. Excuse me? The way that you talk to him, I mean. He doesn't know quite what to make of you. I get that a lot. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. Any young man would be happy to date you. Oh, no, thanks. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out where my life is going. I don't even need distractions. I understand that. Come on, Judy, why don't we get started? I'm sure you have ingredients for the base of some of these cookies. That I do. <laughs> Cider on a cold, cold night, and I am feeling alive. Let's get together on a big old tree. 
Come light a candle and sing with me. Fa la 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 la, you look lovely tonight. Fa la la la, what are you wishing for this year? Fa la 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 la, it feels so magic and bright. Fa la la la, the thing that I am wishing for is right here. The stress of the past few months settling onto my skin like frostbite. I need to feel like a kid again. Watch my breath fog in the starlight. La 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 la, you look lovely tonight. La 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 la, what are you wishing for this year? La 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 la, it feels so magic and bright. La 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 la. The thing that I am wishing for is right here, right here, right now. So much snow on the ground. I know what I really want. What I want this year. La 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 la. You look so lovely tonight. La 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 la. What are you wishing for this year? La 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 la. It feels so magic and bright. Exhausted. We got so much done. We did. And it looks great. I imagine it tastes great too, judging by how many samples you've had. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Oh, I am going to go upstairs and take a hot bath and get ready for the party. Charles should be home any minute. Okay, I'll fix him a plate for dinner. Oh, thank you, Ivy. And thanks again for making dinner too. My pleasure. I'm so glad you liked it. Oh, that's putting it mildly. If anyone should have a restaurant in this town, it's you. Yeah. Who knew a princess could cook so well? Are you going to call me that for the rest of my life? If you're lucky. Behave, you two. Thank you for helping my mom. It's no problem. <sighs> no. Seriously, Ivy, I haven't seen my mom laugh and smile like that around Christmas in a long time. You just call me Ivy. So? That's your name, right? Right. Hello? Hi, Mr. Person. Please, call me Charles. Hey, Dad. How's it going down at the shop? Oh, same as yesterday. There's a real bad wreck down on 87. They're calling for extra toes. You need me to go in? Nah. I don't want to impose, especially with the Christmas party tonight. No, Dad, it's fine. I'll call in. Thanks, Max. Will you be back in time for the party? Oh, yeah, of course. I just need to work up an appetite. Careful. Don't worry about me, Princess. I'll see you guys later. Uh, that was a change. What was? Well, when I left this morning, it seemed like you two were going to rip each other's heads off. Well, it is the season of forgiveness, right? I guess so. Come on, I'll fix you a plate. Hey, Dad. You know where Abby is? Uh, she's calling her family and then getting ready for the party. Okay. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna be pretty late tonight. I gotta go tow seven cars. That many? Yeah. A tractor trailer jackknife and took out all of them. Any injuries? I don't know, but 87 is completely shut down both ways. You don't have to go, Max. Yeah, but I feel like if I do, it'll probably just run smoother, you know? True. So, Ivy. Don't start. Start what? It's merely an observation. You know what? It's nothing, OK? There's nothing. <laughs> I never said there was. She's still a princess. <laughs> OK, Max. I guess she could stay for Christmas if she wants. Oh? Yeah, I mean, she did help Mom do all the cooking, so. Why are they cooking anyway? I thought your mom hired water lily caterers. 
No, she said that a pipe burst at the catering hall, so they weren't able to do any of the cooking. Really? I saw Lily's husband at the auto shop earlier, and he didn't mention that. Really? It's weird. Yeah, he said mom called and canceled because of the weather. Weather? That doesn't sound right. Yeah, that's what he said. You know, Lily was glad she didn't have to go out in the blizzard, but... <sighs> oh. Really? Goodbye, Dad. Max, Max. We did not have this conversation. <laughs> Whatever. It was really fun. I mean, I haven't had that much fun cooking in a long time. Max and Judy were great. What, Max? Oh, don't tell me you softened up. There just wasn't a lot that I knew about him. Ivy Anderson made a snap judgment about someone? No. Very funny. I don't know. I mean, he just, he may not be as bad as I thought he was. Well, you be careful. And I try to enjoy the party. Okay, I will. I love you. Bye. so cute. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Ivy, sweetheart, enjoy the party. I am. I, you don't have to offer food to my guests. You are my guest. I know, but I really am having a good time, Judy. I love seeing how people react to my food. What are these? I don't remember you making them. Uh, well, Max got dates instead of apricot, so I made almond stuffed dates wrapped in prosciutto. Would you like one? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> What do you think? Amazing. See? That's what I love about the holidays. It's the first time in years that I haven't cooked Christmas Eve dinner for my family. Well, Ivy, if it means that much to you, you're welcome to cook for us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will. Well, I know that Charles and Max would love it, and I could be your sous chef. <laughs> Speaking of Max, where is he? Um, I don't think he's come back from the accident scene yet. Well, it's getting late. If he doesn't come back soon, he's going to miss out on all the food. Don't worry. I fixed him a plate and hid it in the kitchen. Well, that was very kind of you, Ivy. Well, tis the season, right? Indeed. You know, I think you may have given Max the greatest Christmas gift of all. Oh? And what's that? <laughs> you sure are something, Judy Carson. So are you, Charles. something for the mayor's son? Max, you're back. Yes, and I'm starving. Uh, try this. This is incredible. Thanks. Seriously, princess, you really know how to cook. I'm glad you like them. My mom wanted to open up a restaurant, but, you know, then my dad just opened up the auto body shop. Uh, she told me. Maybe you could get her to retire from office and you two could open up a restaurant together. <laughs> well, your mom did rope me in to make Christmas Eve dinner tomorrow. Bless her. Are you okay with that? If it tastes anything like this, absolutely. Seriously, Max, is it okay I stay here for Christmas Eve? I feel like such a burden. Don't be silly. We always take in strays for the holidays. Excuse me? That sounded bad. I didn't mean for it to sound like that. What did you mean? The holidays have never been just for my parents and I. My mom's been there for a really long time, so we constantly have people over the house for Christmas Eve, Christmas, Thanksgiving. 
You name it, people are here. She's the most popular person in town. It must be really hard to share her. Sometimes. But my point being, we have an open door policy, so we don't turn anyone away. Yeah, my family is really different. I mean, it's, it's always been just the four of us. And our traditions are really special for the holidays. Don't get me wrong, we have our traditions too. Well, maybe we could share some of them tomorrow. I'd like that. Max! There you are! Did, did I interrupt something? No. You have the worst time. What did I do? I'm gonna go get changed. I'll be back up. What did I do? Christmas. I mean, you got something for me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm all out. But there is a dessert buffet in the dining room. Oh, I'm uh, talking about the food. Oh, uh, well, I'm not sure what you're talking about then. Oh, I'm standing under the mistletoe. Oh. I didn't notice. I've just been handing out food to the guests, so. Well, you gotta kiss someone under the mistletoe. Otherwise, it's eight years bad luck. Oh. I've heard that before. Is that a Pennsylvania tradition or something? Uh, no, I don't think so, actually. I think it's probably from London. Well, surprise is not Paris. Paris? Well, it is a city of love. Oh, look, mistletoe. Max. Hey, man, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Todd. How's your fiance? Uh, we broke up. Hmm. Some other time. Hey, Julie! When am I going to catch you under the mistletoe? Enjoy the rest of the night, Todd. you. What? You know what? He was gonna try to kiss you. You kissed me. Yeah, so? Uh, well, I didn't tell you you could kiss me. Well, but he's a stranger. Well, you're a stranger too, Max. Oh, no, not. At least you know my name. I knew his name. Oh, yeah? What was his name? Todd. Well, you only knew his name because I said it when he walked off. So? Um, I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry. You're sorry for... Sorry for kissing you. Oh, you're sorry for kissing me? Oh my gosh, you are possible, Ivy. No, I'm sorry for kissing you without your permission, okay? Yes. Apology accepted. It's a stupid tradition anyways. He was telling the truth? About eight years of bad luck if you don't kiss under the mistletoe? Yeah, of course. Oh. Well wouldn't want us to have bad luck. Oh, yeah, of course not. I mean, you know, I've been so lucky in love lately. Yeah, so have I. Well, that's why I did it. You know, I don't want to have us have eight years bad luck. Oh, me neither. Especially in love. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're still under the mistletoe. I see that. Merry Christmas, Max. Sparkling cream. Yep, there's the last of it. The rest of the house is clean. Thanks for helping, Ivy. Oh, it was fun. Help take my mind off of being away from my family. You really miss them, huh? I do. I haven't seen them since the summer. You didn't go home for Thanksgiving? I couldn't. The restaurant was having a big event, and I couldn't miss it. Well, your family didn't come down to you? No, my dad broke his ankle skiing, so it was too much. We just made plans for Christmas. What about Sawyer? 
He stayed to help. And Dad was sad enough not having me around, so we didn't want to make it worse. I'm really sorry, Ivy. I could try to get you home tomorrow. Be silly. It's Christmas Eve. There aren't any flights. I could try to drive you. The truck's pretty powerful. Max, even if the snow isn't as bad as they say it's going to be, why should you miss Christmas with your family? If I'm being honest, I think I'd rather spend it with you. Well, I'm not going anywhere. You could spend it here with me. And you're cooking, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> now, that's something I can look forward to. As long as there's no emergencies, I should be around all day tomorrow. Yeah, sounds good. Ivy, there's something I want to get off my chest. Mm -hmm. Last night, I didn't know it was you that was here. When George told me that my mom took in a stranger, I rushed out of there before I could get any details. I thought it was like a hitchhiker or something. My mom's known to do that. She just takes in strangers because she feels bad. When I got back here and I saw you in those silly pajamas, I was relieved. I didn't think I was ever going to see you again. And I didn't want to. I had my heart broken pretty badly a few years ago. It took me a while to get over it. When I saw you tonight under the mistletoe with Todd, I don't know what came over me. I think it was jealousy. I got so mad thinking that he was going to try to kiss you because I wanted to kiss you. So I did. And when we kissed, I felt something. So I wanted to know if you felt it too. Ivy? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, coffee? Please. Breakfast? No, I have to wake up first. Mm. Morning. Good morning, Max. How's it outside? Mm. Got another six inches dumped on us last night. When is this going to stop? There's got to be some kind of a record. It is. Biggest snowstorm since 1961. My dad said it's supposed to stop snowing in Boston tonight around 8. Mm. That sounds about right. It's going to stop here around 2 or so. Are you sure you don't want me to try to take you home? I'm sure. Unless you're trying to get rid of me. Of course not. I mean, besides, there are no flights into Logan Airport today or tomorrow. But I can start driving after Christmas breakfast. Oh, yeah, I guess it'll be clear by then. Well, Ivy, it's going to be a little more than a couple of days. We've got a broken axle. What does that mean? Uh, it means that your wheels won't turn until we fix it. Oh. Don't worry, Princess. We'll take good care of you. So, what are your Christmas traditions? We have a few. 
Yeah, like what? Well, we all wear matching pajamas on Christmas Eve. I'm not doing that this year. <laughs> hey, it's only fair since you saw me in my PJs. Yeah, what was that all about? Well, my family has a pajama tradition, too. We see who can wear the most Christmas spirited PJs. We've been doing it since Sori and I were teenagers. And no one sees each other's Christmas pajamas until Christmas morning. But you would have won that again this year. Well, I am the reigning champ. Although my dad has given me a run for my money every now and again. Every year, Mom cooks my favorite Christmas cookies. Well, just so we can leave some for Santa. Right, Max? He has a special glass for milk, too. <laughs> what kind of cookies? Uh, chocolate chip, of course. Oh, what traditionalist. Yeah, but your lemon drop cookies are a close second. Mm -hmm. I thank you. Hint. Hint. All right, I got it. I'll make some more later. Good, because I only got two last night. We barely had any leftovers. I am so glad everyone enjoyed the food. I don't know how I'm going to repay you, Ivy. Are you kidding? You gave me a place to stay for Christmas. Oh, that's what Christmas is all about, isn't it? It is. So what about you, Judy? What's your favorite Christmas tradition? Well, getting, getting dressed, dressed up, up on, on Christmas. Christmas. Oh, come on, am I that predictable? A little. <laughs> Where do you go? What do you mean? You get all dressed up. Where do you go? We don't go anywhere. Really? Uh, I grew up in Manhattan, and it was just always something my family did. Yeah, you know, we kept the tradition after we got married. I mean, we go to church in the afternoon, but that's about it. Yeah, Mom just cooks a huge Christmas dinner, and we all get dressed in our nicest clothes and eat. I love that. And, you know, I actually packed the perfect outfit to wear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more tradition. Something special from your family. We make Christmas wishes. Christmas wishes? How do you do that? Well, we each get a piece of paper and a marker. We sit in front of the fireplace with hot chocolate, and we write our Christmas wish on the paper. And then we fold it up and put it in front of the fireplace. And if you're really good, your wish will get sucked up into the chimney on its way to Santa's sleigh. <laughs> really? Well, maybe not. But, well, sometimes the hot air does mix with the cold air and forms a little vacuum at the top of the chimney. My dad is a science teacher, so he probably figured it out and came up with a tradition. <laughs> That's adorable. I think we should do it tonight. Hmm. Really? OK. After dinner. It's a date. So should be doing that for a little bit. Might say so. Dad, I wanted to talk to you about something. Go for it. When you first met Mom, did you know right away that she was the one? I mean, I'm not running down the aisle or anything, but I feel like there's something between Ivy and me, something I've never felt before, not even with Bridget. Ugh. I know. I know, Bridget came at a terrible time, but this is different, Dad. Ivy's different. She's got this fire in her, you know? Mm-hmm. I know, I like it too. She's just so different than anyone I've ever met before. Mm-hmm. And I love how close she is with her family. I feel like you don't really see that anymore. Sometimes I think that I'm the only person my age that would just drop everything for their parents, and here she is driving through a blizzard just to get to hers for Christmas. Hmm. Yeah, I know. It was stupid, but she's strong-willed, and I like that, too. I feel like if she sets her mind to something, she's going to go after it, and she's going to get it. Hmm. Mom said she's single, so I mean, maybe there's a chance? Hmm. I know the distance can be a deal-breaker, but I don't know. She said she wants to move from Charleston, so maybe she'll find a restaurant, like, in Philly. Or 
Maybe she takes over Brian's pub and she moves here. I mean, that would be amazing. Hmm. She could do all the cooking and I could handle all the business end of it. I mean, we get along pretty well, right? And if she feels the same way about me than I do about her, I mean, this could be something pretty real, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go do some research. Good talk, Dad. You're welcome. <laughs> Ivy, can I help you? That's the least I can do. This looks amazing. It certainly does. What is it? Well, for our Christmas Eve dinner, I have prepared beef wellington with mushroom dexel, duchess potatoes, charred Brussels sprouts. Please, enjoy. You made this in my kitchen? Yes, of course. But I didn't buy wellingtons. Well, I took the extra pastry dough from the spinach artichoke bombs and I made this instead of the steak and mushrooms you're going to make. Wow. Is that okay, Max? Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Ha! That's a first, Ivy. You actually rendered my son speechless. <laughs> oh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, dig in. <laughs> first we say grace. Of course. Lord, thank you for this delicious meal we're about to eat and for keeping us safe in the storm. Please watch over us and all our friends and family, especially Ivy's family, as they're missing their beloved girl this year. Thank you for bringing Ivy to us and for all the blessings you bestow for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Bon appétit. <laughs> That's it. I tap out. Oh, it's a wrestling reference. You're a wrestler? Oh, not anymore. He was great. Pennsylvania State Champion two years in a row. Really? Don't be so surprised, Princess. There's plenty you don't know about. I'm sure. I just can picture you as a wrestler. Mom, don't. Let's leave the boys to clean up, and uh, I'll show you some pictures of Max from high school. Mom, please don't show her the pictures. That's from like 10 years ago. Well, uh, Charles, if you and Max don't mind cleaning up, I would love to see these pictures. I might. No. <laughs> well, I don't. Come on, Max. Come on, Ivy. Here it is. Oh, what's this? Photos of Max in high school. Oh, he looks so young. <laughs> <laughs> he was 17 years old when this photo was taken. Oh, how cute. I'd like to think that he's still cute. Don't you? Nice try, Judy. What? I'm not trying anything. A girl can appreciate a good-looking guy, can't she? Yes, Max is very handsome. He thinks that you're pretty, too. Oh? Said something? No. I'm his mother. I can tell. <laughs> you and my mother would really get along. <laughs> you know, have you ever thought that maybe Max was your reason? What do you mean? Well, everything happens for a reason. Maybe you got stuck in Bethlehem because you were meant to meet Max. Mm, I don't know, Judy. <laughs> but it is a possibility, right? Sure, anything is possible. Just make sure you stay in touch once you leave. Of course. This is a Christmas I will never, ever forget. Neither will I. And the way that everyone appreciated my cooking really inspired me to take a bigger step. Oh? I've always dreamed of having my own restaurant. I never thought I could do it. Really? You single-handedly cooked for over 200 people yesterday. It wasn't that many people, was it? It had to be. The entire town was invited. Well, see, that's what I mean. Like, tonight, it was like I was doing a chef's table. It was really an amazing feeling. 
You're terrific at what you do. But the problem is, I only can cook. I wouldn't know the first thing about the business end of it. Well, Max could help you with that. Max? Sure. He has a master's in business. He was on track to be CFO before he came back home. Max. Your son, Max? <laughs> Ivy, I told you. He quit his job to come here and help the family. But why didn't he ever go back? I don't know. I never asked him. He knows that he can leave if he wants to. I think that he was waiting to meet you. Mom, can you bring Ivy in here? <laughs> Let's go. You can't possibly be done with the dishes. Nope. What is all this? Well, we thought we could do your Christmas wish tradition. Oh, that's a great idea. Show us what to do, princess. Well, it's really simple. You just write your deepest wish for Christmas and fold the paper in half. That's it? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the first step. <laughs> Now what? Then you place it right in front of the fireplace, as close to the fire, without burning it like this. What's next? Then we sip our hot chocolate and hope our wishes disappear up into the chimney. Really? Yeah. Sometimes they go and sometimes they don't, but that's the fun of it. You have a strange sense of fun, Princess. Max. It's okay, I know it seems silly, but my last wish came true senior year of college. What was your wish? I wished I could get into culinary school in Charleston. It's a wasted wish if you ask me. She didn't ask you. It's fine. <sighs> I know it may seem silly, but I was really happy with everything in my life, and I really wanted to go to school in Charleston, and it was super expensive. The day after Christmas, I found out I got a full ride. Really? Yeah. Call it what you want, but my wish was granted. But why a wish on Christmas Eve? Don't people normally just do that on their birthday? Sure, but the magic of Christmas helps make wishes come true. I think that's wonderful, Ivy. Thank you, Judy. And if I ever get married and have kids, I like to do this tradition with them, too. How sweet. It's a great way to find out what your kids really want for Christmas, too. <laughs> So what's the plan for tomorrow? If it's OK with you, I'd like to sleep in. Oh, absolutely. You deserve it. What, no breakfast? There's cereal in the pantry. Yeah, if it's OK with you, I would like to go to bed a little early tonight. I'm still worn out from yesterday. Yeah, wouldn't want you falling asleep on the couch again. <laughs> you go ahead, Ivy. Thank you, Judy. Thanks for everything. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, and no checking anyone else's Christmas wishes. You can't even see whose wish goes up the chimney until Christmas morning. It's bad luck for eight years. Good night. Good night, Princess. Good night, Ivy. I really like her. So do I. I like her, too. I knew it. Mom! Good night, Max. Max? Max! Oh, hey, Dad. What are you doing? Research. On? I want to do something nice for Ivy for Christmas. Oh, sure. Just, it's going to be her first Christmas that she spends away from her family. I feel like she had fun at the party and at dinner tonight was amazing, but I don't know. I just feel like there's a part of her that's still sad, you know? True. She did all that cooking for the party and for dinner tonight. I just feel like there's something that, like, I or that we should be able to do for her for Christmas, right? Well, yeah, sure. Well, what? 
I mean, I've been looking at these kitchen gadgets for the last hour and a half, and I'm never gonna get anything sent here for tomorrow. Well, I'm not gonna try to cook anything, because Mom's cooking dinner, and I can barely even make a pot of coffee, so breakfast is definitely out. How about... How about you get her car fixed, so that she could get home for Christmas? I mean, I know you're waiting on that part, but maybe we could find a junk car in town, and then we could use that part to get in her car to get her on our way. And then maybe she'll make it seem like we're kind of rushing her out, right? I have an idea. Dad, I've had tons of ideas, Dad. It's actually insane. I've never wanted to do something nice for somebody my entire life. It's actually driving me crazy. I have this entire tab of poems that I'm going to write in a card for her. Like, poems, Dad. You should see this one. Dad? Here. What's this? Ivy's wish. Dad, you sneaky dog. What? Am I gonna get eight years of bad luck for this? I think it might be quite the opposite, son. Well? Yeah, I think I can do this. Yeah? Yeah. Need help? Yeah. Do you know where the phone is that she's been using to call her family? In the kitchen. You and mom haven't used that, right? I haven't. I don't think your mom has either. Great. Nice. The man pops. Thank you. doing, princess? Just getting a glass of water. The kitchen's out left. Right. I know. Um, I just thought I left my glass over there. You're a terrible liar. Well, what are you doing down here? I was just looking something up on the computer. Mm-hmm. So whose wish is missing? I don't know. You didn't check? No. You said it was like eight years of bad luck. I've heard of something else that can give eight years of bad luck. Oh, yeah? What's that? Was this a setup? <laughs> no, I swear. Right. Well, we wouldn't want eight years of bad luck now, would we? I know I wouldn't. Neither would I. Dad! <laughs> Sorry, I got a little hungry. You have the worst. Like, did you warn me? I didn't see anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That ruined the mood. Mm, you can say that. Charles, are you down here? Oh. We're all down here, Mom. You guys were not kidding about the matching pajamas. Dad's in the kitchen. What are you two doing down here? I was looking something up on the computer. I couldn't sleep. I was getting a glass of water. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the water. Nothing happened. I didn't say anything. Judy, nothing happened. You're standing under the mistletoe. You don't want eight years of bad luck. Not you too. It's tradition. Here you go. Thank you. What was that for? Mistletoe. Good night. Night.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Ivy. Merry Christmas. Is Max awake yet? I haven't seen him. Neither have I. I mean, he's been working such long hours lately, I wouldn't blame him for sleeping in. Neither do I. Uh, can I get you something for breakfast? Oh, I'm still full from last night. Well, as soon as Max gets up, we'll exchange presents. Oh, I, I won't intrude on. You can let me know when you're done. Well, who says that we don't have any presents for you? For me? Billy? Ivy, you can't wake up Christmas morning without presents. But Judy, I, I don't have anything for any of you. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> Ivy, you saved Christmas for this town by cooking, and then you made an incredible meal for us for dinner. I, believe me, those were gifts enough. It was a gift for me to share with you. Mom, Dad, is Ivy awake? Uh, we're in the kitchen. Can we open presents now? I've got a surprise for Ivy. Sure. For me? I'd like to give my gift to Ivy first. To me? Yeah. You've treated my parents and I with love and respect since you've been here, and you didn't even know us. Max, it's the least I could do. I'm really glad I met you, Ivy. You're such a genuine person, and I hope to get to know you more. Maybe this isn't the last holiday we spend together. Max, stop. No, let me finish. When we first met, I wasn't very nice. I was. Tired, I was hungry, I was cranky, cold. I was rude. And if my mom didn't take you in, I would have never seen you again. Even then I was rude and I'm sorry for that. It's okay, really. You gave me a chance. You broke down at least one of the walls I built up around my heart and you showed me what I was missing. That was the true Christmas gift. So I wanted to give you something I know you wanted. I never told you what I wanted for Christmas. Oh, but you did. Come on in, guys. <laughs> Merry Christmas! I'm so worried about you. I'm so worried. I don't understand how this is even possible. Well, Max here called us last night after you went to bed, and he arranged for us to get a flight into Philadelphia this morning. But Logan is closed. Yeah, closed for flights coming in, I. Not for flights going out. Max got us in here this morning. See? He's not such a bad guy. <laughs> I can't believe this. Max, thank you. Thank you so much. This was... This was my Christmas wish. I know. You stole my wish? No. I granted it. <laughs> Um, Sawyer, Mom, Dad, I know you've met Max already, but this is Judy and Charles Carson, and Charles and Judy, this, these are my parents, Mary and Bill Anderson, and Thank you so much my brother Sawyer. Thank you for Thank you for making care of us. Thank you for making care of us. Of course. Thank you so much for taking care of us. Of course. Oh, welcome, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Well, this certainly has been a memorable Christmas. That's for sure. I say we do it again next year, but at our house. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, as long as there's no snow. <laughs> and, and Ivy still does the cooking. Mm, fair. Yes. Okay. So, Ivy, Charles and I were talking last night after you went to bed, and we have a proposal for you. Oh? We do. Being mayor of this town, I don't have a chance to follow my own dreams. When I accepted office, I knew that I was in it for the long haul. My dream of opening my own restaurant was going to have to wait. Okay. I saved up a lot of money to open my own restaurant and I never used it. I invested it and I made it work for me. And now I want to invest in you. What does that mean? I would like to open a restaurant with you here in Bethlehem. I'll be your investor, and you can create the restaurant. Max can take care of the business end of it all. What? No way! Did you know about this? That's actually what I was looking up last night. There's a restaurant for sale right here in town on Main Street. You said you wanted to leave Charleston. I, you have said that to us many times. Yes. I know. This is going to be awfully hard. 
Well, if it wasn't hard, it wouldn't be worth doing. <laughs> wow, there's like stereo. Something got it wrong. Ivy, this this is your dream come true. You you have to take the chance. And it's a lot closer than Charleston. We'll support you however we can. And so will. And I'll invest under one condition. What's that? That you let me help come and cook and even create the menu with you. Yes, as a force. <laughs> oh my god, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, this is, this is moving so fast. Um, I'm gonna have to find a place to, to live and, and work in the meantime. I'm sure it'll all work out. Don't worry, we're not going anywhere. You could say that again. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Funny how our families get along. It's like they've known each other for years. I know, it's so strange. It is. It's how I feel about you. Like you've known me forever? Yeah. I think maybe your mom was right. And you are the reason. The reason? The reason I got stuck in Bethlehem. What do you mean? Maybe we were supposed to meet Max. I don't know, but it just feels... right. It does feel right. Thank you for making my Christmas wish come true. Thank you for making my Christmas wish come true. I'm talking about the one I wrote on the paper last night. So am I. Wishing for this year. 